Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Kellen here with Droid Life. So we've got the HTC One M8 here. We want to talk about its camera and how it compares to the camera in the Galaxy S5. Now, what we've done is essentially taken five things that we think make this camera stand out above Samsung's. Uh, and for those worried, we're going to do the same thing going the other way because there's at least five things in the Galaxy S5 camera that we think are probably better than the One. So we'll, we'll go back and forth in another video. But in this one in particular, we're going to focus on the One and five things that HEC did really well. Now, we've, you know, we've, we've made it pretty obvious that we're not huge fans of the idea to go with a four megapixel camera on the back and, you know, this depth sensor and killing off OIS and stuff like that. But HTC's camera actually really can take some decent photos. And then it's also got some really cool sort of software features, which is what we're really going to highlight here. So the first one is actually HTC Zoe. And you may recall HTC Zoe from the original HTC One. So you can see the button there in modes. So the original HTC One had the Zoe mode where essentially you took a three second video and from that video, the camera software would pull out stills from that three second video, which you could then choose, you know, your favorite, the best shot, edit it, share it, and all that stuff. So that mode has returned and all you really need to do is press and hold on the camera for you know up to three seconds. If you go over that, it then just starts recording a video. But if you do just two to three seconds, it'll record this little video. And so we can jump into the gallery and there's a play button because again, it does record a video and there is actually sound with this video. So you can share this little, this little video clip if you want. Uh, but down here in the bottom left, you'll see this frame button. And if you tap on that, it actually takes you into a whole bunch of frames and stills that it has pulled out from that video. So you can scroll through those and find the best shot. Now you can imagine this would be really nice if you're, you know, in you're, you're trying to take a family portrait or something. You got a whole bunch of people and you're trying to get them all to smile and look at you and not blink. You could you could scroll through and find maybe a frame where that's happening, uh, or an action shot. Maybe you want to pull out a specific frame or something like that. So it's kind of a cool idea, and then it's also great to share in uh, HTC's highlights, which is one of their uh, gallery features. So HTC is always number one. The second thing we want to talk about is actually U Focus. So U Focus, we were kind of critical um, about, and it sort of takes advantage of this depth sensor on the back of the camera. But what it allows you to do is take a photo, and then you could refocus it after the fact and things like that. So if we take a look at this photo I took earlier today, you've got a bird bath in the middle, and uh, if I go ahead and jump in and try to edit the photo. And, and use this sort of U focus mode. It allows you to sort of blur out, give this sort of bokeh effect, um, and then focus on the middle and sort of blur everything in the background. You can see it kind of doing it there. Now we're critical of it because the software probably needs some fine tuning. It doesn't do an amazing job, but it does do a, a, a decent job. Uh, but so you can sort of tap around and it does refocus after the fact, and you can decide where you want that focus to be. And so, you know, kind of cool here. Uh, one thing I will note is that we're, we're pointing it out because it does have this depth sensor, which allows it to do this in sort of any shooting mode. Now, Samsung and Sony are doing similar things, except that in Samsung's case, you can only use it when you're shooting in special portrait modes. So in other words, it only works if you are, if you take a picture of someone's of someone's face and it pulls out that face and it recognizes the face, then you can sort of blur the background afterwards. And, and that's kind of the only, the only use for it. With HTC's camera, you can do it with any photo. As long as you're not blocking that sort of depth sensor on the back, you can actually refocus any photo. And you know, there's some other modes and stuff in there you can tweak as well that just sort of do some cool things like this foregrounder and there's some season things. There's some other things that only HTC is able to do because it's using uh, this depth sensor. So while it's kind of gimmicky in, in its current state and it needs some work and it'll hopefully get better, it is something that they can sort of take advantage of later on and sort of do some cool things with. So you focus, yes, we are actually kind of fans of it, even though we're not, if that makes sense. Uh, next thing I want to talk about though is the camera UI. So HTC's camera UI has really been simplified. You've got all things laid out where you want them. There's your shutter button, your gallery button, your modes button. Um, and then you have your flash button up top left and then a little menu button down here in the in the bottom left. So you can just tap and shoot and that's really all you really need to do, especially if you've got it just set in auto. It can just be a really, really fast camera, which it is. Uh, but if you want to tweak things, you can just hit menu once and then jump in and, you know, adjust exposure or adjust the lighting or really sort of tweak these things. And all it takes is a tap on menu and then a tap on that setting and you can sort of adjust things manually pretty quickly, which is which is really cool about this camera. So if you really wanna get advanced and sort of make your photos look like you want them to, or if you wanna sort of just take control of your camera, you can do that uh, pretty quickly, which is kind of cool. 
Uh, so next thing we should talk about then is probably this front facing camera. So HTC put a five megapixel front camera in here, which is actually a bigger resolution than the back four ultra pixel camera. So if we swipe over and uh, we'll give you a quick wave here while we're recording. So selfies, right? You could take the best selfies on earth, essentially. Five megapixel selfie camera. I don't think anyone else is doing anything close to this at this point. And so HTC is allowing you to take what could potentially be the best selfies ever. Five megapixel wide angle camera. Can't really beat that, can you? Especially in the day and age of selfies. So the last thing I want to talk about uh, is saving a custom camera setup. So if we, if you go in, you know, again, you're adjusting exposure and lighting and you're setting filters, or maybe you have a specific use case for, you know, a certain camera setup or something like that, you can actually go into the settings. And if you scroll all the way down, there's a save as camera and you can name your camera. So you could call it indoor or here it's just defaulting to camera one, but you could set it up for, you know, maybe a specific location or something like that and save it. And then you can access all those later. So if you go into modes and just scroll up once, you can see I've got a couple of that I just quickly created for this video. Uh, but you could quickly sort of jump between all these different settings. So you can see this one, I have a different lighting and a different filter set. And then in this terrible one, I have this sort of pixelated filter set. And so I've got all these different things that you can just kind of jump between quickly. And you can really sort of customize a bunch of different cameras, which is a really cool feature, especially if you're not fond of just auto settings and you really want to sort of toggle all of that stuff. Uh, so, you know, HTC's done some pretty cool things with the camera. Again, it's four megapixel, but at the same time, they've done some things software wise and uh, using that depth sensor to do some cool things. So we'll have more later, again, also on the Galaxy S5 side. So if you guys have questions, comments, let us know. We're Droid Life. Peace.